Okay, perfect example of this. You know the Jonah Hill story that's going around about mm-hmm. how he was like abusive to his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, so he had her take down. So before they started dating, he used to comment on all those photos and say, damn girl, you look good, blah, blah, blah. As soon as he started dating her and made her his girlfriend, he asked her to take those photos down off her Instagram because of control. So what are your feelings on that? I love the smooth transition. See, now we're going into the, I just got chills. Let me tell you this. It all goes by, okay, so I'm going to speak from my point of view. I'm not going to date somebody in my point of view that is, say, for instance, a model. Okay? Here's where I'm going to go with this. I'm going to just tell you a little short story. I'm not going to de- necessarily date somebody that's a model. But if you're in the health and wellness space, that's for me to pick and choose. Because then I know that it's all about showing your body in the best representative way possible. Mm-hmm. You know when it's professional versus when it's occupational. Of a just, I want to just get thirst traps, right? So men, rule number one. You have to ask yourself this question. If your children, if you have kids with this woman and how she's throwing herself on social media, can your kids open up social media and go, that's mom and identify her? That's okay, but now thing. I'm going to ask you about Kiki Palmer. I'm gonna, we don't we ain't even go there. We're not going to go there yet. Just, just wait. Let me cook for a second. Let me cook, Sam. Let me cook. So with that said, I'm the type of person, I'm not jealous about what people post on Insta. Because you got to be secure within yourself. Because the same thing people can say about me. Well, all you do is you interview women on your podcast. Why? Well, because they are having a voice to simply sit here and come here and, and execute and talk about the things that need to be talked about. Men can do it also too. But when it comes to certain matches, certain debates, certain conversations that we're doing, you need to have the woman to be in the place. And you and challenge like I said us, again, which I love. Which, and which comes into... I know I have the one, the three, and the five. The two and the four comes in, and this is the reason why we cook and we make some amazing things happen on this platform. Yeah. So with that said, you have to look at and you have to pick and you have to choose. Is it thirst trap or is it me posting something where I'm with the girls, we're eating pasta, we're baking cookies, we're doing all this? That's what I champion. I, I see captions, and I'm going to get to what you were, basically what you were saying. I see captions of people wanting to thirst, thirst sorry, about, oh, I'm out here doing this. Oh, I'm a bad B. I'm a this. I'm a that. Listen, you want to keep considering yourself and saying that you're a bad B? You're diminishing who you are. You're diminishing what your offspring is going to be carrying. Because if you want to have kids or you're caretaking kids or you're into that space, people are look at you and say, yo, you a joke and you're running amok. Now See, I'm I don't agree. That's fine. That's fine. But here's the I thing. I respect is. that a lot because I think mm-hmm. a lot of what you said has a lot of truth to it. I love mm-hmm. what you said about the men need to be able to see, is this for a thirst trap or is this for her business or her career or her platform, right? What about stages of evolution? Why are we expecting people to be straight to pure and why not give them the space to explore who they are and either evolve or stay the same and love them where they're at regardless why so much of the judgment around women who may feel really empowered to call themselves a bad bit bad b whatever why because you're diminishing you're degrading yourself you you're actually are you're degrading yourself so I disagree because coming from someone, again, with the confidence issues, I, I love how this keeps coming up. Like, there's going to be moments, I know for sure, that I need to post something really seductive on my Instagram and call myself a bad bee, right? And it's not for the external validation. It's truly because I can. And it's my power to do that. And it's my right to do that regardless of what other people think regardless of what other people say it's like i'm feeling 
fucking good about myself, which is rare because there's a lot of times where I feel shitty about myself. So the one time that I feel fucking good, I want to post that for myself. Okay. So here's where I'm going to challenge you. I think you can say bad, but I think you have to take out the other B word because we know what bitch represents. When you want to put yourself out there and you use these illusions, right? You have to really say to yourself is, here's one. I'm a badass woman wanting to maybe empower other women. Not a bad B-I-T-C-H. Because when I hear that, it's just like you're degrading yourself. But it's more about like slang than it is about the okay. truth of the word. I love where we're going here. I love where we're going here. And it's more okay. so about like a vibe rather than taking it at face value okay. of the word. Okay. So I'm black. I can't go on social media and drop N bombs and say I'm the baddest. I'm the baddest nigger. You know, I was about to say yeah. it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I, was about to, I was about to end myself there. I can't go out there and I can't say that. And then you see how our white counterparts, right? Say, for instance, I'll give you an example YouTuber, Zerka was on Twitter talking about end bomb this end bomb that. And I'm saying, where are you getting the past to say that you're, you, you, that you, you're insane. not even black. Like, bro, you don't even identify as black. Eminem don't even say the end bomb, but you let okay, this so guy run amok and say this. Okay. So there's some things that are like universally off the table. You not know what I mean? Not supposed to do it. Not yeah. supposed to do it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Universally, you Talk know? And that's when you make that choice to disregard that that means you don't deserve respect because you don't respect yourself. You think that you're above what is right and wrong or whatever. Like, I, I do believe in a lot that, you know, there's no such thing as right or wrong, but there is a such thing as respect. Facts. And in my opinion, and, you know, everybody's entitled to their own beliefs. B-I-T-C-H is a completely different situation than the N-word. And... The N-word is something that when you use it, you disrespect an entire part of the world that we all went through, or not we specifically, but universally. And our ancestors all were, were all involved and we all were impacted by it. I'd say that. Right? And we all hold our ancestors' DNA, right? So mm. we're all still connected to what went down and we should all still hold ourselves accountable for what went down and understand that even though it didn't happen right now, it still happens in other countries yes. and it's still very much real in mm -hmm. our DNA. So mm -hmm. respect that and understand that it's kind of the same thing with like the Jews, right? You don't cross a line because of what their ancestors collectively went through. Mm -hmm. Same with, you know, any, like the Mexicans and things like that. Like you don't cross a line because it's about respect. Exactly. So we were talking about the Jonah Hill situation and and kind of going back to that. When I think Poor red unhealed flags, soul. Yeah. But when it comes down to men, I think that your woman's going to go out there and she's going to post certain things. I, I'll be honest. I'm a big component. Post but did you stuff. see the photos? Okay. Can we talk about this first? Let's go ahead. Talk about the photos. She's surfing. She well, you can't be out in a full out nightgown when you're surfing. <laughs> And she is a very athletic build. She's not even that sexually like oozing sex. She is a very modest, athletic woman. And she's like, just because I wasn't in a wetsuit, he has a problem with it. What was she in? I didn't, because I, I, this skated past my desk. I didn't click it or anything like that. Okay. So it was literally a bathing suit. So a two-piece bathing one piece, suit. One-piece, two-piece, okay. So she's smart. She wore two-piece. She wasn't wearing like a one-piece Speedo. Like his So watch. he said, anything in a thong, you need to take down. And she's like, um, it's not a thong, but okay. And it's not a thong. It's just, you know, bathing suits go up a little bit, when, especially when you're doing activities like surfing. Okay, so. And he literally, like before, to court her was saying 
praising this photo. And as soon as he has her, he's like, oh, take this down. Because he has a simp mindset. See, a real man that knows the occupation, knows what he's getting into with a woman, is going to set the foundation like how I originally said it. You got to know what it is you're getting into. If all of a sudden, okay, say for instance, I'm dating somebody and she posts things of like f being a foodie, travel person, different countries, but then she's posting something surfing, I would only be like, I didn't know you post surfing fit pictures, right? See, if it, with but that... let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. But it's all with context because if you're posting, like you see a lot of fitness girls do this, oh, it's shoulder day. But I can see your back, your backside. Then let's make it make it be make it make give me some sense here. Because if it's shoulder days, you're shouldering your shoulders, not your ass. I'm sorry. So you know what you're doing. You see what I'm saying? And that's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm what I'm doing is I'm playing both sides. I'm technically going to play both sides. So the reason I don't like what you're saying isn't feeling good inside of me is because you claim okay. to say that you are a safe space for women, but then there's mm -hmm. so much judgment and so many like nuances where it's like. I'm a safe space until you post a thirst trap. I'm a safe space until you call yourself a bad beat. But here's I'm a the safe thing space that... until. And it's like, why are there so many conditions to that? Because Be you can't claim to be a safe space and then also not let women f express themselves freely. Because all we have been done in this world has been to tell us we're too much of something or we're not enough of something. And all we want to do is be free to be who we are and express ourselves how we are, healed or not. Like, there's no thing out there that says that we have to be healed in order to be loved. We are mm. worthy of unconditional love at every step of our journeys. So here's what I'll say to you, and I love that you went there, is that I'm playing devil's advocate because I haven't really given a definite yes no. or no, right? Totally. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm doing that on purpose because I want the audience that are listening, that are viewing this to say, they'll have those same questions. What does he think? I know. Pers but how I, and if you see how I dressed it up, I said is, look, it all depends on situational scenarios and situations. If you're dating a per like I know who and what it is I want to date, right? And if, like I said, if she's somebody that's a model, I don't think I'm going to be dating that. Now, I'm not disrespecting yeah. models. I just know what I that's going to come with, right? Mm -hmm. If you're You have to be self-aware yeah. of what you're yeah. able to hold and 100%. what you're not able to hold. And For then sure. choose consciously a person who can make you feel safe and secure Absolutely. in your masculinity. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So with him, here's how I look at it as. I don't think he's... A real man may not say anything to it. I'm going to be honest. I think a man's man ain't going to say anything to it because you really shouldn't be complaining unless he's doing something detrimental to your to your health and to your relationship. I think that's when you're going to say something to it. Mm -hmm. Let it skate by. But again, we're talking about celebrities. So I'll mm -hmm. spin it like this. If you meet your girl on sliding in the DM, because that's what's happening now, right? Mm -hmm. DM actions are happening. We know that women are the, the gatekeepers to everything that happens, right? So men, that's not your ticket to say, oh, I can just run amok and do whatever it is I wanna do, right? Within reason, like you guys have to be in some sort of committed relationship. And you know, then you ebbs and you flows of what domination is gonna look like in the bedroom, right? So that, 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 that's how I'm going to play Which the safe line there. Hopefully doesn't reflect in the real world because that's how you Which get doesn't, to feel it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I look at men in red flags, men have to always realize is that we're up against the wall. This is where the peace has to come into play, right? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to find the best version of yourself? So here's a, one tip surrounding who you're around, who you're wanting to be around, right? Champion and being around the right people, the right energy in men. Guys that are going to reach out, guys that are going to call you, guys that are going to have networking meetings, guys that are going to be like, yo, champion, what do you got going on? I just was on the phone last night. I was gaming, some Call of Duty. One of my guys goes, what do you got planned for tomorrow? I didn't really answer the question because I was so deep in the game. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got shit going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's what you want. That's the 
first things first, have the right people. Heck, mm -hmm. if you're a single male, hang around with dudes. And this is going to sound crazy. What I'm about to say is hang around with guys. If you're wanting to be in a committed relationship with somewhere down the road and you're single, hang around with guys that are married. Hang around with guys that are showing what evolution and what they is. So when you get into your relationship conversations, it's not like, yo, my wife is tripping. Yo, my girlfriend's tripping. Oh, we're fighting. We're nagging and this and that. Be around healthy energy. Mm-hmm. Okay, but then I have a question for you. I've heard your podcast I, with um, when you said when men get into relationships, they forget about their single guy friends. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and I think it's true too. So you just said that, like, you know, if you you being around healthy masculine energy, hang out around men who are married. Do you believe that? Like, how do you think that equal energy exchange? can happen without it without anyone's feelings getting hurt so with men and friends or so with like a single guy and a married man how can what does an equal energy exchange in that dynamic look like because a single man has a lot more time and energy available to their friendships than a man who is in a committed relationship that's lies and that's cap i'm gonna Santa, I'm sorry. Respectfully, that's cap. So here's Please what I'm going to tell explain. you. It's all about Enlighten balance. Mm -hmm. Balance, balance, balance. Here's the thing. If you can't spare an hour out of yeah. your day, out of your week, then you have to really ask yourself the question, where does that person play in my life? An hour. That hour could be meeting in person, talking on the phone, being on FaceTime. One of my guys, and I know you would not mind me saying this, we talk a lot. And it's so funny because his wife goes, yo, you and Rory be on the phone for hours. So cute. But I love a, a good healthy, romance. But it's a healthy relationship. Yeah. Right? And we ebbs and we flow. It could be gaming. It Nothing makes me happier than my husband, like gaming and shooting you the shit with his I guy mean? friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? It makes my heart so fucking happy. <laughs> but you know what the plot twist is? Y'all be sitting here in the other room listening. But what are y'all talking about in there? So I know what you guys were doing. It's the same thing. You guys love the <laughs> gossip. You love no, when we girls go and have our wine night. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. Not, gossip. Like, not gossip in terms of like toxic gossip. There's a healthy gossip where it's like, oh, like who's still dating who or who's, <laughs> whose relationship is struggling right now. <laughs> exactly, right? So with that, it's about taking an at least an hour out of your week, not out of your day, out of your week. Do you know what but, I mean? Okay, so I, it's not about the time. I think what I meant is the energy. So the married man is offering the single man an example of what an an evolved masculine looks like. Mm -hmm. And then what is the man, the other guy, like the healthy masculine receiving from that friendship so that he feels good about pouring that time into. Safe, safe space and boundaries and really understanding that itself. It's, it's okay to be any form of vulnerable with, your other person that you're meeting with or that you're hanging out That's with. That's invaluable shit. That's good. Right? So that could be within business. That could be within, you know, work. That could be within content creation and things like that. Mm -hmm. I think where it gets weird is when, so I have a friend. And you know, I'm going to share it all out. I don't really care because this is what this is all about. And he's over in America and he's doing his medical, right? And he right. goes back and forth. He said to me, he goes, listen, when you hit me up that day and said what my plan was, and he said, you gave me the time at five o'clock, he goes, I then knew, I was like, yo, listen, I got to make, so make myself free that we can both simply able to sim simply sit there and talk. And it was a four hour meetup, food, this, that, you know, whatever, whatever. But a lot of men don't know how to do that because a lot of men get complacent in life. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why Speak it's all that. about this. Why does that happen? Because I... <laughs> Why do I think it happens? Yeah. You really want me to you really want me to know? You really want me to tell you? I'm so because curious. I think 
I think that men get lazy and men don't ever want to practice what being a real man is. It's not about necessarily about money, but men should be leading towards first things first, exercise, form of exercise, form of exercise, being in that gym, boxing, running. That's step number one. Step number two, be able to go to work, not complaining and saying, oh, I don't want to go to work today, right? Lay off of the drugs, lay off the alcohol. There are major distractions in life, right? Now I see that's the reason so many high achievers, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. Do I drink? Yes. But I don't drink to get belligerently drunk. Do I smoke weed? No. Had a bad trip when I was young. So I don't touch none of that. Do I hang around with guys that are, do I hang around with guys that still smoke weed? Yes. But you know what they do? They do it in the private compounds of their household. Or they yeah. step out of the venue or the area. They're not doing it 7 You not see what I'm saying? To totally. You have to do things that are going to excel and level up your mind. Get your audiobooks yeah. on. I watch a lot of fucking content. I watch mm-hmm. a lot of content. That's content that's going to sharpen my mind, right? Everything is either audio or visu- video with me. I don't got time to pick up a book and sit here and go, okay, cool. Because it's too many distractions, yeah. right? Podcasts, free resources out there, right? Always finding a way to network perfect your craft, perfect your relationships. That is what men should be doing. Not going on the pixels. And I've said this on a previous episode and typing in your favorite OnlyFans chick or whatever porn star that's out there, or should I say corn star that's out there? Because I have to say corn because the algorithm is going to end up frying me, right? And be simply sitting here and being like, oh, look, this is what's going on with Lena the Pug and Adam 22. Those, I've had those conversations. Am I going to talk about it on a podcast? Maybe not, because none of my business. But Adam 22, I'll get it out there and I'll say it. He's a simp. He's a simp. You let your girl, like, you're letting, you, you're, letting your, you're letting your whole woman, right, be an OnlyFans chick. Okay, yes, you guys had the trade-off. She was allowed to simply sit here and bring other women in, and you guys mate with each other. Now she wants to step out because guess what? She's sick and tired of that. She wants to graduate. So guess what? She found a bigger, better deal. And now you on social media crying about it, saying, oh, I let my wife be with another man of another nationality, blah, 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 blah. And people are saying he's going to make all this money from it. Yeah, he's going to make so much money off of it. But you know what the crazy thing's going to happen is when she's going to graduate from that and then say, oh, listen, I don't want to have one man. I want to have two to three to four and however means it's going to be. That's the reason why he would never put me on that show because I'd cook him. I'd cook them. Cook them. Well, you can speak about it all you want, though. Oh, I don't speak about it. And I hope he catches it. I hope he catches the algorithm. Right? Yeah. It's low vibration. It's low vibrational energy. Any man that subscribes and paying money to these people for that, you have to really ask yourself a few questions. That's where your hard-earned work is going to. Low vibration pixels. But what about Low vibration people, pixels? What if their journey on this earth is not to evolve and like the thing that i always question right like the weight of the world on our shoulders is something that i think about a lot as people that are here to spread the message on how to become better thriving human beings right one thing that really helped me is knowing that every single person on this planet is placed exactly where they need to be in order for the world to keep spinning and everyone is playing their integral role in the society and it is up to the human to choose evolution when they feel like the world that they're operating in no longer serves them and then evolving becomes something that they have to do if they want to find fulfillment and happiness. Okay. So I challenge this real quick. Evolution should come from something. I've always said there's nothing wrong with working a nine to five, Mm -hmm. but working a nine to five, going home to family, your kids, your loved ones, and watching Netflix, if that's the life you want to live, cool, travel, maybe one, two times a year with your family, that's cool. All right. For me, it's about you go to work, right? Once you're done work, you go to the gym, you come home, you mellow out. You either figure out what the agenda is going to be for the next day or for the next weeks coming ahead. 
planning content creation, sending out emails. That's the evolution of mine. That's having the mama mentality with the basketball. Any means necessary, right? I think a lot of single men that just want to simply sit here, go out every single weekend, which I see why guys do that because there's two different plays to it. Guys work so hard five days for the week, so they want to go out on a Saturday night and have time just to chill out and mellow out and vibe out. Nothing wrong mm-hmm. with that. Nothing wrong with that, right? It's now what you're doing in between that. Because if you're going out chasing tail, hoping to find a girl, take her to pound town every fucking week, like, bruh, see you later. Mm-hmm. It's just, it does, you're not going to progress to anything. Because all you're doing, if you're simply sitting here every week, every Saturday, and you're spending anywhere between 150 to 200 bucks and that night, that equals out to be what? Almost 10, what, 5 to 10K a year? Mm-hmm. That I know my math That's could be completely off. Car. That's crazy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like the ones that are going out every weekend and that's their time to unwind. Cool. Do that. It is what it is. It's mm-hmm. social hour. You know what? I'm a big component now because I got a lot of things going on coming in the next few you know, weeks and things like that and months is everything now when I go out is all networking. It's all high level conversation. There's Where nothing does more- play come into that? Like, what about inner child Rory? Where does he get to just, like, have fun and just, like, not have the constant pressure of this, like, evolution, growth journey? It's not Because a girl, a woman really wants to have fun. Like, she wants a man who is dedicated to his growth and evolution, of course, but then also knowing that when they are together... Like your growth should happen on your own. But when you're together, like with me and my husband, like that's my joy. That's my fun. That's why you see our Instagram posts and we're out having fun doing all these fun, crazy things. Like I don't want to sit there and like just constantly hear about your habits and what you're doing and your growth. And like, where's your personality outside of being a growing individual? So I love that you say that, and that's in going to movies, right? Right now, if I was in a relationship, if I'm not in a relationship, because nobody's ever going to know until the championship hardware is on the championship finger. You see what I'm saying? That's when you'll know, and that's when everything will happen. Going to movies is the biggest thing. Going out and doing things, you know what I mean? If it's like picking up maybe virtual golf. I don't ice skate. I don't roller skate. That's not my jam. (laughs) So don't get me out there. When you six four and you two fifty, like going Can on you ice skates, imagine skates, that would be hilarious. It hurts if you fall. It hurts, right? <laughs> um, doing it's some form of that, fun. right? Yeah, uh, going going different cities. You know what I mean. Spending a lot of time in Toronto. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And and really, on sporting events, things like that. Gaming is a big component, also too, right? Yeah. So there's always that fun side to me, right? If when I'm in a relationship, all the women know what it is. Yo, it's going to be time. It's it's going to be, we're going to go out here. We're going to eat this. We're going to eat that. We're going to hang out. We're going to have conversations. We're going to vibe out. You're going to ask me about podcasts. And I'm going to say, is it's weekend. I don't want to talk about podcasts. <laughs> I love that. Boundaries. I don't want to talk so about podcasting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk to mm. me on Monday morning. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then they look at you and they're like, wait, you don't want to talk about podcasting? Yeah, I don't want to talk about podcasting. But yeah. that's your craft. How can I help support you? Well, you know, Ma, let me tell you this. You could help support me, but let's have the conversation at 901 on Monday morning. Yeah, that's a business conversation. That's not a date you know what conversation. I mean? you know hey, what like I, mean? I, yeah, I mean, let's go back to red flags in the beginning of dating, right? Mm-hmm. The number one, the biggest red flag, forget this personal development stuff, right? Put that to the side. It's extremely important, but you're not going to know someone's personal development journey on the first date. What you will know on the first date is how many hobbies and interests do they have outside of making money, external validation, external approval. What do they enjoy to do just for them and themselves? And that is going to be so much more telling for you. Is this person a secure individual or not? The more hobbies they have outside of professional and personal development makes them a more secure person in themselves. It's what funny you, you say that. that. No, I love that. But you know what I think 
when you're not a person that we, we joked about this camping, I don't do camping. I don't, right. I'm sorry. I don't do camping. Hiking. I can do to, a, to, to a level, right? Mm-hmm. Camping and hiking are two different things. But I think when you hear a lot of people talk about, Oh, I want to go out on my boat. Well, sorry. I don't do open body water. I almost died when I was a child. I almost drowned. That's con- you got to start compromising with that because listen, if you're scared of heights, I'm not going to put you hey, in sea I power. almost drowned in a beach, but that's still some of my favorite that's places to you, be. That is you. That is you. That is not me. I'm speaking from my point of view, Santa. Let me, let, let, listen, hello? You got to face your fears. <laughs> listen, let me tell you something. I don't listen, need to come be in open Seattle, body we'll go water. on a boat. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. The only we'll time I'm coming lightly. to see it, tread lightly. Yeah, with my water wings and my life jacket. Out of here, recording in progress. <laughs> Wait, the podcaster just did the podcaster just enter an open body of water? Yeah, right. Can't do it. We're gonna it's record just... it. It's gonna go viral. Oh, Lord. It'll be the best thing to ever exist on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> I hear you, right? The the thing is, is that you gotta be able to understand what people do and what it is they like as far as hobbies, and I think you can then instantly build into it you know what i mean i find it weird when some people say they, they don't like watching movies i think that's weird i'm gonna say you don't like movies like what's wrong with you like yeah. what do you like what do you rather mm-hmm. do some people then are like grounded to nature okay cool that means more walks you know that means more hikes cool i have no problem walking yeah. i love walking walking's amazing i'll go on a two i'll go on a, on a 11k walk right now if i wanted to it's humid outside but later in the evening but you have to, I think in the very first beginning stages, it's the best representation of people are trying to do. It's like a job interview, right? Mm-hmm. What does that person like to do? Heck, you know what? I like pro wrestling. I think one of the most sexiest things, and I've had a couple exes, it would have been back in the day. We're talking about years, years ago. There's been live wrestling events. I want to go to you with that. I'm dead ass saying, going, what? You want to go watch what pro wrestling? But I know you like this. I'm like, nah, it's all good. Because in the back of my mind, I already know what's going to happen. You're going to ask me all these questions the whole entire time. I love that you say that because my next question is there's a difference between making sure that those hobbies are compatible. And then there's also a difference in just saying, hey, that's, I love that for you. You know, and knowing that just because you're in a long-term committed relationship doesn't mean you need to do all of the hobbies together. And in fact, it's actually a lot healthier for two people to have completely different hobbies that they enjoy to do alone, occasionally maybe together, but in a blue moon, mostly alone, because that creates that sense of self within a loving, monogamous, long-term partnership. Facts. And I think that it also goes into where, okay, there's a lot of people that like country music. I don't really rock with country music. Would it's I the same thing over and over again? But right? What? It's the same, same stuff, same stuff. Would I support you in maybe buying you country music concert tickets for mm. two to take one of your girls? And 100%. that is so romantic. And that's right? more romantic than like going like say your partner bought you the pro wrestling tickets. And was like, hey, go with your guy friends, have a guy's night, like go have fun. I know this is coming up and I know you really love this. And I just like got it for you because I thought about you because I know you love wrestling. It's amazing. It's amazing. Right? And I think that's how you, that's it, That's where you go with the feminine, the feminine energy and the masculine mm-hmm. energy. It's when you can ebbs and flows. It's kind of like I'm supporting you, but I don't yeah. have to necessarily be there. Now, when you go to these things, it's not saying that you go to the country music concert and then you go hang out with this guy, that guy, and have him buy all your drinks for you that night. Because I'm <laughs> okay. First of all, <laughs> like the number one thing when people like heard about Talk me about and my you. husband living apart together was, oh, so you get to do whatever you want with whoever you want, and your husband's never going to know, or they think like, oh, he's going to have people over and this and that. Again, goes back to how secure is the individual in their solitude and their alone time. People that can't be alone are more likely to go out and seek external attention, company, yada, yada. But if you know your partner 
loves their alone time. They have so many hobbies and they have so many things in life that like fill them up that doesn't require external validation. And I guess that goes back to your Instagram post comment about women. How many of them are putting out their straps because they need that external validation versus how secure are they in themselves and they are posting content that can create an impact and empower others, right? Like, are you, do you need more from the world or are you willing to give more to the world? And that shows how confident and secure a person is. But then you're going to have the women that say, well, it's my body, my choice, what I want to post. And I'm just like, but it goes back to, yeah, but don't complain if men are going to sexually objectify you. It's just how the trade-off is going to be. And they like that. Like a woman knows that she would not be posting what she is doing if she was not seeking for that attention. That attention feels good. And like... Just ask yourself, do you want to be known for just your appearance that will change when you age and you'll lose one day? And then what are you going to do? Or do you want to have an impact that you can provide to the world with your wisdom and your power and your just confidence and your expression of freedom, right? It's like, why are you posting this? Are you posting this because... You want to, because you're feeling insecure, or are you posting this to empower others? That's it. It's just that simple. And there's nothing wrong with posting because you feel insecure, but then being consciously aware and emotionally intelligent enough to know that you're doing that because of a wound tells you, okay, go ahead and still do it. Know that you're going to attract insecure men as well because you're being insecure. And if you want to change the pattern of the people that you're attracting in your life, change your habits, do the inner work to see why am I insecure? Where is this insecurity coming from? The shadow work. And like I said, a woman's job in this world is to heal her lineage, heal her soul. And the masculine's role is to keep gaining wisdom in how to be an optimal human of society And the man leads in helping the women become successful, confident, powerful. And the woman holds the space for the man to dissolve the patriarchy and the capitalist society, all this crap limiting beliefs that we have. So a woman's job is to empower the man to be confident in who he is inside. And a man's job is to hold the space for the woman to have that confidence in herself so that she doesn't need to seek that external validation. And it's well said. It's well said. And I think that a lot of women now, the ones that are aligned, the chakras are aligned. You see them Mm -hmm. going down that journey. Yeah. The men that are championing themselves to become better are, are championing that also too. And that's why I heard an influencer once say this, and it makes the most sense. A lot of women will do one of two things with a man. The ones that they know they can run amok with, they'll sell him anything, and he'll just go with it. The ones that they know that they can't, they'll do one of two things. They'll either sit there, and they'll chomp on the mouth guard, and they'll shut their mouth, and they fall in line, or they just taper off, and they run away. That's just how it is, because they realize that this potential person is going to call me out on my shit. You know, it's so funny that you say that. I always say that if you're not willing to look in the mirror, don't get married because that is the role of a long-term partnership, any relationship. I mean, it happens all the time in our friendships and our family dynamics as well, but it's like on a, such a small scale because you're not with them 24 seven. When you're living with someone, they are going to trigger the hell out of you because they are mirroring all of your insecurities and your doubts and your wounds. And if you're not willing to do the work. You got to travel with them. You got to, if the first vacation that you and that said woman can go on or that said male can go on, (laughs) try to do it as quick as you can because you'll see everything you need to see. 
It was, yeah, so funny. My husband and I went to Cancun a month into dating. We were still casual. And I'm like Googling, what does it mean when a guy takes you to <laughs> on vacation? <laughs> you know why we – and it's so funny. You know why people Google is because they want to get the information, right? They want the information that's going to change. I wanted to validate what I'm feeling. Like, oh, my gosh, he's really interested in me. And he's serious about me and blah, blah, blah. When in reality, he's like, I just wanted to go on a vacation and you seem fun. And I asked you to come with me, you know? Yeah. Before we get out of here real quick, we're we're just going to do like a, a quick just back and forth. When we think about these red flags between men and between women and all this, what are what are these things? And this is a quick refresher because I feel like some people just have blinders on. They don't got the Brady, the Peyton Manning vision. They're not looking down the field. They're not Patrick okay. Mahomes can throw sixty yards, no look. They tend to just want to be like, oh, this is okay. Let me just show up, right? Yeah. Like, what 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 are the things you should be looking for? Is it speech? Is it character? Is it fidgetiness? Let's okay. talk about it. I'm going to talk about it from a female perspective and I want, I would love for you to talk about it from a male's perspective. Like, Let's do it. Okay. So if I was on a first date, these are the things that I would look for in order to see if like the red flags, the green flags and the beige flags, the red flags are, how are they treating the wait staff? How, how are they speaking to them when you're on a date, when you're out in public, how are they interacting with the world around them? Observe. Be an observer without judgment. Just take it in and tally up the marks, right? How do they treat women that they're not interested in? You could tell these things just on like at a restaurant. How are they talking to the wait staff? How are they talking to the hostess? How are they, are they ordering for you? Are they like being controlling? Are they being, or, or are they holding space and being like, hey, what would you like? Order whatever you want. I got it. You know what I mean? And then another thing that you should look for is the hobbies. Ask them like, hey, what do you like to do in your free time? Cool. What's your plan for, what are your biggest dreams, right? Do they have dreams? Do they care about growth and personal development? These are all first date questions that aren't too aggressive and too this and that. If you come with the energy of a simple observer with zero judgment, Just get to know someone on a first date and then process that date when you go home. Don't sit there and argue and judge them and this and that on that date because they're allowed to do what they want and you're allowed to do what you want and you get to choose, do I want a second date or not? Before I answer, should the men, (laughs) should the man always pay for the first date? So I believe to be yes, and it's because it shows that you take her seriously. It shows that you are ready to invest, not just financially, but also your time and your energy because that money took time and energy for you to gain. And that is the bigger picture here. It's not, oh, can you support me financially, women? gives a bigger message than just, Hey, I got you financially because a woman doesn't technically need a man to support her financially, but she does want to know that you will pour your time and energy into her. And that is a symbol of that. Okay. I love that you say that men, 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 men coming from my point of view, I'm about to cook. Yeah. It's going to be a hibachi grill time. So step one, you guys go out no matter what you're doing. She's not going to ever complain or champion or challenge whatever it is that you have going on. If she's actually interested into wanting to get to know you, that's step one. Step two with that is once everything is done, does she text at the end of the night and says, thank you? Mm. Or does she say it to you? Because you go in on a lot of dates and there's a lot of entitlement where it could be something so small where you guys Ladies Grab. always say thank you. But always they don't. show gratitude. They don't. Lately, they don't. And I'm hearing it from all different spectrums. And I'm sitting here to myself and I'm like, where's the manners? Right? If she don't say thank you, walk away from that scenario and situation. I'm sorry. Just cut your losses. Because it shows that she doesn't have proper home training. 
there's you got to say thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You have to. So I have a question. Go ahead. So what I hear on the women's side is when I show gratitude, they take it 10 steps further and say, now what are you going to give to me because I did this for you? And that is why I believe women fear showing gratitude to men they just met because they don't know if they're going to be, if a woman says, thank you so much for that meal, nine times out of 10, the man's going to be like, now what do I get? But and then that puts so much pressure on a woman to do things that she's not ready for and says, why can't you just like do a nice thing for me just out of the pureness of your heart? Why does it have to be this tit for tat situation? And I love that you say that because I think it comes down to respect. And I think that you will know, you will know women. I'm going to, I'm going to say something here. And at me, I know is that probably going to, I feel you're going to give me a rebuttal. You should know who you're going to sit across from where out it, whatever it is you guys are doing, right? If it's a play date, if you guys are going bowling, if you guys are going playing darts, if you're playing mini golf, you should know, you should really know. And I think the best representation of that is doing the background checks. I've had women say to me, I've crept you on social media. I've listened to your episodes. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm like, what if I... someone's not on social media? Listen, you can figure a person out. It's not that hard. Google is yeah. a hell of a thing. Google's a hell of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that once you know and what you're doing, you'll have a good idea. You'll know. You can tell if a guy is really psychologically messed up and you know he's this there for one thing. Yeah. But guys like myself, and this is going to be some free game. Once you take it off the table from the early stages, I'm talking about first that you take it off the table. You don't come with that. You don't lead with that. It forces the woman to think, well, wait, if he's not looking at me like a piece of meat and he's not going to sexually objectify me, what's Ooh, that's the That's going to send her nervous system into chaos greater... if she doesn't think she has any self-worth outside of her external image. Exactly. And that's how you can play the fault line because they say, yes, women do are the ones that control of what happens. But when you take it off the table and you're not acting thirsty and you're having wholesome conversation, you're just getting to know each Ooh, other. That's going to make her go crazy. You're sparring in the, you're sparring in the ring. You're doing whatever you need to do. Here's a free game. I'm going to say it to a lot of people. Nine times out of 10, she's the one who's actually going to pursue you. Believe 100%. it or not. No, no. Be like women don't hide it. When we want something, we want something and we'll tell you we want it. And that's exactly. on a secure woman, right? That's yep. another thing, like a red flag. If you are questioning where you stand with a woman, she's not secure in herself. Yep. Yep. If and she is secure in herself, you'll know. Like the yep. energy will be so clear. And they make it, like I said, as a woman will always make it easy, right? Mm -hmm. None of this, you have to chase her. She has to chase you. She's going to open up herself available to you. And nine times out of yep. 10, men, and I'll say this is free game here. Don't go in thirsty. Watch how she reacts to it. Because if yeah. she's in one with herself, she's going to say, okay, what's his play? And then she's the one who's going to be like, yo, hey, let's let's hang out. Oh, we're we going to hang out. Oh, come over. <laughs> what? Because well, there's a way to troll that. Come over and do what? What are we going to do? We're going to play chess? No, oh, we're going to watch a movie. Okay. You know what that word is for. 100%. As you soon know what as she's trying you to ask tell you. someone to come over, you know what the intentions are. You know what the intentions are, but women are never going to fully come out and say, come over and, you know, maybe your wife, maybe your girlfriend. I mean, you know I, mean? <laughs> I don't really know. I mean, there's been times early dating with my husband where I'm just like, hey, I'm coming over. And I would make it clear because it's times where, like, sometimes you just want a date, sometimes you just want, what you want. And there's times where, especially early dating before you're committed, you're not going to lay out your problems to this person, but you're going to still want to see them because you're interested in them. Absolutely. So sometimes you just want yep. that feeling of connection yep. and that intimacy because you're feeling low. Yep. 
the other thing is communication patterns. Now, I know this is going to come across, just going to be very buzzy for some people. The communication elements is that if she's expecting you to always pursue, I think that's a problem. It should be mutual. Here's where the caveat is. Women love to talk. So if she's not orbiting herself around you, that's when you'll know. That's when you'll know. Because nine times out of 10, she's going to reach out to you and talk about something within her day, or she's going to want to check in with you. She's going to pick something. If it's, say, for instance, you have a podcast, maybe she reaches out to you the next day and says, hey, what do you have coming up for a podcast? I've had that happen. And I kind of look at the message and I'm like, huh, what? That means she's asking because guess what? She's orbiting herself. She's bringing herself forward. Or maybe she's showing you, interest. You, she's showing interest. Or maybe you play, you know, uh, pick up house league soccer. Oh, are you ready for your game? Even though it's house league, little things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I want men to really clue into that because there is a pandemic now where I think a lot of women are now playing the one to many role. They're dating around, they're spinning plates from the beginning of the conversation that we talked about. Right. And it's very, very dangerous because you know that they're doing it. And here's another gem I'm going to drop the level of fidgetiness of them being fidgety on a date. And I've seen it happen in the last eight months, mm -hmm. you go out with somebody and they're fidgeting. And I had to call, I'm like, yo, are you, is everything okay? You all right? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. And I'm like, I instantly saw it. And the first thing I said to myself is, I don't want to assume across the table, but it tells me, A, I may not be the only person, especially if it's a high, high place where a lot of people frequent. That's the other thing I, told, I tell people too. If you're in the same city, Go to the popular places, go to the popular places and really see what happens. Cause I go to all the popular places and people see me, people know me by face, by name, because of what I do for work, especially this podcast. Right. And I say this with like love and gratitude, appreciate all the people that see that because then you'll see, then you'll really see, because if you're out and then somebody sees you, one of your boys see you or a girl sees you that maybe came into your job or whatever. And they look across the table and they see it's with a girl. They'll be like, you see that look it give you. Oh, you're with her. Oh, you're with him. Oh, you're doing this. Oh, you're doing that. So those little things, those little minute little details can really tell you what's going on. Okay, I have two questions. Go ahead. About the anxious, the anxiety. At what point do we stop taking things personally and maybe step back and think, I wonder if this person has anxious attachment style and they don't feel comfortable on a date and they're just nervous. They're just anxious. And it's not because she has all these games playing in her mind. I think we overcomplicate people when in reality, humans are so simple and it's all about not assuming and staying curious and becoming the observer instead of like replaying your past case scenarios into a present moment. When do we know is when I believe that the foundation is built early stages, early stages. I think before you get into the first encounter and there's a lot of people have championed that I've heard a lot of people say is they actually like to have a conversation before they meet with the person, depending on how the dynamics are. So but mental if, health isn't something that you can read right away. If mental health absolutely. was something that was easy to pinpoint mm -hmm. and see from the get go, therapists would be able to cure people with mental health issues instantly. This is the reason why I say when you have the yin and the yang, and this is just on a podcast business professional level, one, three, five, you're the two and the four. So I see what you're doing. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Because I think that if two people, and I'm saying, if you just, if this is your first time meeting and there's no previous conversation, yes, there's going to be nervousness. But if you actually have maybe a little bit of a rapport, maybe it's a quick little FaceTime, maybe it's a quick little check-in, people would not tend to be nervous. I think it changes the whole dynamic. I think people I are more like- I still get nervous sometimes on a date with my husband <laughs> because I have anxious attachment style, right? So okay. Because of, if I was being disguarded, like 
people saw that I'm like nervous. I play with my hands a lot. I literally like I'm constantly like nervous, anxiety. I'm self-soothing constantly when I'm nervous. And I get nervous because I'm not, it's not because of the other person. It's not because of anything external. It's just my own mental health issues that we just simply do not have control over, you know? So like, I think that what needs to stop in first dates, early dating stages is pre-assumptions that you think you know everything about a person just based on their behavior because humans, as simple as we are, there's a lot that can be happening in our inner worlds that have absolutely nothing to do with our date, our friendships, our community, our life. And it's just life. Okay. So let me ask, let me play devil's advocate to you before we get out of here. Do What's the component of, because I see and I hear some people doing this, and I've had this happen also a lot of times also too, where that open sense of communication, it's not saying you're pouring out your whole entire life story, but if you have something that's going on, I always say it's maybe best to just say it to somebody. And that's one thing I also want to clear up in this whole entire thing is be open. Yeah. You should be open with whatever piece of communication. Mm -hmm. Heck, if you come out and God forbid, like your goldfish died or your hamster died or your dog's sick or your dog's unwell, probably say that to me first because I don't want to know where you're at. Yeah. I don't want to be the person to be like, oh, is everything okay? And then you're simply sitting there ready to just burst out in tears. The worst thing in the world is also the passive aggressiveness, right? Because you're deflecting. Like, just be open and honest about where you are. Even if you're nervous and you don't know why. Even if you're feeling certain things that are coming up and you don't know why, just say, like, hey, like, I'm not my best self right now. I don't quite know what's going on with me. I will process this later, but I want you to know that I am interested in being here with you right now, but I'm just feeling some sort of way. Thank you. Thank you. You don't need to like know what's going on with you. I remember, I remember in my past, it was about pandemic, 2021. I was, we were just sitting there in a, just in a park, just hanging out, just whatever vibing. And I said something that made her think about her dad. Yeah. And she, I saw it like complete change around. I'm like, are you good? And she's like, um, and she start just verbalizing. She's like, he's no longer here anymore. This and that, this and that. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel bad, but I was just like, Hey, I appreciate you being vulnerable. And she started to tear up. I was like, you know, it's okay to cry and just cry. She's like, I don't want to cry. I don't want you to think this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, you're fine. Don't worry about it. It's all mm-hmm. good. It's all good. Because I think that when you don't want to also feel like a burden. Yeah. With but our I think personal shit that we should be over by now because yeah. that happened so long ago. Yeah. But I think when you're dealing with people that are in one and they're in tune with themselves and they show empathy, they're masculine, they provide the safe space. I know you challenged me a little bit on the show here. I think you know. I think you know when there's good energy. Because that person doesn't look at you and be like, yo, why are you crying? Just dry up your tears. Now, if you're crying about something like whatever, I'm going to tell you, get over yourself. You'll be fine. I was going to ask, as a secure man, at what point does that anxiety get to be too much where, you're, where you say, where you, you get tired of holding that safe space for that person as frequently as you need to because you're not the one with the anxiety. So when you know your problems may come up occasionally, Versus someone with, you know, anxious attachment style, mental health issues, codependency, abandonment wounds, that person's wounds are kind of come up more frequently. I think that once you go into a, something in that's more secure, mm-hmm. and I'm not talking about like one or two, you know, meetings, three meetings, I think by the time and how I am, I think people tend to see is, is this going to work? Yeah. He's maybe too, just boom, he's laser focused. He provides a safe space. Yeah. A lot of women discredit themselves from even finishing the race. And it's not even because of you. It's because of them. Because they feel like I can't get to where he's at. And I've heard that. The unworthiness. I have a client that's literally who just got married last week. A week before she said, 
I do not feel worthy of being married. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, is this cold feet or is this something else? And it could be cold feet, right? It could be that, but cold feet happens for a reason when you're not yeah. secure, right? So like- it's part of life. So many women feel unworthy of these healthy, secure men. And that's why they self-sabotage and go for their comfort zone of what feels comfortable, even though that's toxic. The toxic dudes, the toxic dudes that are going to run amok. Toxic dude that's not going to talk to you for a week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, does he still love me? When you're mm -hmm. on the charcuterie boards, wine night, the winery place. Like, hello? Like, when I hear that shit, like, it's so cringe now. Because it's like, ma, you know, he don't like you. Are you, you sure? You know what's so annoying sure? about those wine <laughs> nights and those charcuterie nights? I wish women would start being more honest with their other women and say, hey, like, Maybe he's just not that into you. It has nothing to do with you, but you need to move on. But instead, they start playing those games and they say, okay, how can we get him to like you more? How can we manipulate him into like seeing your worth? How, like, you know what I mean? Why does it have to be games and not just like say, hey, he's just not that into you and you deserve someone who is into you and, and just tell them to like cut the ties and find someone who won't play the games. Because it's the karmatic debt that people love to put in society. Ooh, Men do I it and women do it also that. too. They put the karmatic debt because they mm. discredit the certain dudes. And I'm speaking from a man's perspective. They discredit the certain dudes that are not coming with, not coming to them with the willy nilly stuff. Yo, hey, I find you interesting. Whoop de whoop. Let's go do this. Whoop de whoop. Let's go do that. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll do that. Next thing you know, a couple of days go by. I don't know. I can't do it. Something came up. No, a bigger, better deal came up. A genuine burning desire that you wanted, which mm. is that toxic dude, the guy that wasn't showing you any attention. He came back around. And what he's going to do now is drop off some toxic dick because that's what you're used to. You don't want to simply sit here and you don't want to deal with the guy that's actually being real with you. Just may just talk and have a little conversation. He may want to spar with you a little bit. This lip war, you know? And I think that that's another thing too. I think this podcast, it hinders me this teeny tiny bit. <laughs> it just, because I love it. You're quick. You're quick at the ball to simply sit here and to have answers. And I'll be honest, like I've been out, right? And just having a conversation with somebody, she's like, you're so arrogant. I go, no, I know how to answer the questions that you're coming with. Mm. We're having a conversation. You're just not comfortable with how I'm answering the conversations because you're used to Not low used vibrational to energy with men. And the response back I got was, oh, wow, you know what you're up to. You know what you <laughs> But no, sorry. There's a thing that I read recently, which I think is going to be <laughs> amazing. Women want, or secure women want a healthy man with toxic energy sex. <laughs> So our biggest fear is that once we choose that healthy man, the intimacy is going to die. The intimacy is going to be like not there. And the biggest thing I teach my clients is the more I said this in the podcast last time, the more safe you feel with a man, the kinkier the sex gets. And I wish women knew that and they wouldn't fear that once they do settle down with that healthy man, that secure man, the man that challenges them and you know, enables them to grow. The sex is still going to be even better because it's going to transcend physical intimacy into an energetic one. And this is how this is. <laughs> and this is how I'm just going to simply tie this one up here. Deal with if you're into astrology and you know the signs, you know who's going to put the genetic jackhammer down. Trust me, you're going to know. So find your, astro your, your astrology signs. Yeah. Ask him what his birthday is. Yeah. Right? Ask him when he was born. And you'll probably figure out which one. Here's what I'll just do. Pisces, they, they know what's going on. They know what's going on. <laughs> you know more than I do about all that because I believe Pisces that. Pisces know what's going on. <laughs> Now I got to go look up what that means because I know nothing about Pisces. There's there's certain astrology signs that are amazing lovers. Mm -hmm. I hear Scorpios are something different. We're loyal as, as heck. Yeah, but y'all have a side 
a, a side. When the doors close, you guys have a side that you like, what'd you say? I think that was one of the clips I used. You let your freak fly. <laughs> yeah, when we feel safe to. <laughs> oh, when you feel safe, of course. That's why you got to set it. You got to set the foundation. You but know? like when a Scorpio doesn't feel safe, like those walls are so damn high. And the stingers like, we're not come letting out anyone too. In. And the stingers oh, come yeah. out too. This is things oh my like gosh. a dagger. But we're like the softies too at the same time. It's, yeah. We're confused. I feel you. Where can everybody check you out? And what do you got coming? So I do have my own podcast as well, Thriving in Love podcast, where I talk about what healthy love looks like, what thriving in love looks like. And you can check me out on my Instagram, Sana Akand. And my website is sanaakan.com if you are looking for love coaching. Love coaching. Hear that one. I love this. You know, when am I coming on your pod? You tell me. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Because sometimes when I'm like the guy and I'm just like, you know, I have to ask the questions and whatever. I love it. But when I'm just, this is me with freedom with the mic and I don't have to over, like, think what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. I just let things fly. Oh. Those are the best episodes. <laughs> I love it. Well, you should do I that with your own. Let yourself be free. This is your platform to It is my platform, yourself. but you know, they're coming for me soon. They're coming for me. Or what if they come for you and they say, you know what? This guy's not afraid to say what's on his mind. And that's what's going to make a good episode. And that's why I want to bring him on. Yes, but they, they, I'm saying the other people are coming for me. The algorithm, the matrix. <laughs> We're here to live above the matrix. So that's a whole different world. Let them live their world. Let them live their toxic masculinity, toxic femininity, like whatever. Fuck them. We're not here for that shit. We're here for the people who are ready to break out of the matrix and learn healthy love and actually do better in life. Oh, would you look at that? The show just ended. <laughs>